All right, hello everyone. This is part two, Sky Ranger build. And we're gonna talk about the engine compartment, the cabin, and some other uh, finishing touches. So we'll stay tuned for this kind of part two. So this is uh, part two, of the Sky Ranger with the 912. Actually, you can see the wings have been painted uh, yellow and white. I'll do a little bit of a review for that. Wanted to start with the engine compartment. All right, uh, number one, um, you need to get smaller air filters. Uh, these are available uh, through K&N. They're really, um, just get the dimensions and they'll find exactly what you need. The other change that they wanted, um, this uh, in the book says to turn it. What we found, well, what I found is just a longer uh, hose will allow it to avoid uh, interference. Uh, the firewall is much better. There's some, in the book they talk about seals that go through here and here and some other places. Uh, they're not in the kit. I couldn't find them. Uh, these clips here didn't get enough of the clips, not nearly enough. I went online, uh, Amazon found, found the right size, but I was probably half as many that I ultimately needed. The other big change that they ask for is kind of difficult to see. Let's see if I can find. In order to get the motor mount, the top motor mount is right there. That's the top motor mount. And I usually put in the, what the torque, 27 foot pounds. The fins have to be cut away so that the bolt can come in and out without interference. Once that's cut away properly, uh, it's super easy to get in and out, but it's, it's a worry. Um, they don't use a dynafocal mount, they use a regular mount. Um, typical uh, fuel system, um, oil, oil uh, container is on the side, which is kind of cool. Uh, a really good place to put it, nice firewall access. Banjo bolt for the oil is on the rear, and that comes around really nicely. I uh, don't have any of the, the exhaust or the coolant. Again, I, with this is a used engine I bought from Wentworth, good guys over there. It, ha it came out of a Zenith 701, so it had a, uh, the exhaust was a big canister that was way down at the bottom. It just wouldn't fit with the tight cowling that I've got on this particular airplane. So I ended up having to go and order one, another one from England. Um, that's part of the business. Uh, again, the firewall, really happy with the firewall, a stainless steel, difficult to drill through, but very, very nice. Uh, the fiberglass has been completed. Uh, it actually, it looks, it looks okay. Uh, it's pretty nice. It's nice and smooth when the cowling is on. It's just really super smooth from the front all the way to the back. And like I talked about before, I used some white vinyl tape, which um, kind of seals up all the gaps. The tip to make is kind of don't follow there. Uh, they have some guidelines in here for cutting when you put this in, but they're way too big. So always, any of their cutting suggestions, cut smaller, maybe like a quarter to a half an inch. You can always go back and cut again, but you just can't put it back. The other thing that's been put in are the uh, fuel tanks. Uh, I, I took my seat out of my other plane and put it in here just to kind of get a feel for what's going in here. Um, but the fuel tanks, uh, there are two, there's supposed to be two straps, black straps, one goes over the top. Well, the one going over the top, both of those were too short by about six inches. So I had to go and buy ratchet straps. Uh, again, kind of disappointed we, that didn't happen. Um, but the fuel, it comes with uh, two 
aluminum lines. One is a, uh, goes that way and the other one goes that way back into uh, the tank uh, to utilize that um, return lines, that fuel, fuel line return to prevent a vapor lock, which is kind of cool. The, but the fuel lines are really easy to work with. They come in right up on top and there's a pretty secure place, safe place for them to come through the firewall and into the engine compartment. You can see more steel and more uh, aluminum parts. Um, the stick doesn't have, oh, you see how close the stick is to the instrument panel. Um, but that's, the instrument panel is probably gonna be big enough, but I just worry so the biggest thing that I have is the transponder, right? So the transponder case, the only place it can go is one place, right here. Uh, it, it, there's potential interference with the cables, the aileron cables. And then on this, where my thumb is, this side, the cowling for the instrument panel actually gets smaller it goes in towards the middle so it can't go any farther out it can't go any farther up it can't go any farther down because of other interference and this is just a normal transponder uh, where i'm at i'm under mode c um, bravo airspace so i need a adsb so it's i bought a used um, stratus that had adsb inside the transponder so there's really only one place for this uh, transponder to go. That's okay. The other thing that happens with stock wise is just a central uh, aluminum and aluminum up here and then a T. But it was so flimsy that I went and got some really, it's just light angle aluminum and bolted it in the front. This is connected to an angle. You can see the aluminum angle here. And this is hooked onto the firewall. Makes a much more secure um, uh, instrument panel. It's hooked on the bottom. There's a the the um, the book doesn't really describe. I kind of made a mistake. This is not a vertical instrument panel, as you can see. It actually has a quite a bit of a forward lean, uh, but it's just the right amount so that there's no interference from the, uh, minimal interference from the brake uh, in that full forward position. Again, this is just a seat out of my old plane that I threw in here, just so that I could get a feel for where everything goes. Uh, coming around to this side, I the f fuel lines come together, come up into the engine, pretty simple. So this is, I'm in the middle of doing the throttle uh, difficult to see here. Uh, this is that push-pull throttle. It's a lot of extra work, and I hope it's long enough to get out far enough. All right, so the throttles are in. The cables are not hooked up yet, but the throttle levers are in. The other thing I wanted to mention here is a tip for building the instrument panel. The manual has... Uh, it's not the most efficient way to build it. So my suggestion would be to build this first off of the plane. Put in and attach all of your pieces. Uh, two rivets, one bolt, the same on the bottom, two rivets. And all of these, uh, just assemble this whole thing with this angle, this top angle, the bottom two angles hooked in. Assemble this all on a workbench, much easier than trying to do it in the plane. There are two points. These points on the bottom and this point up here are solid. So what is adjustable is this. this um, uh, they call it a Jubilee clamp. It's a hose clamp. So the idea is to get this from the top of the panel to this angle that you've attached flat. So uh, the adjustments, I had to cut this piece this piece of metal right in here, I had to cut it twice, Short, kept getting it shorter and shorter to make it fit right. 
So in, in the book would have you build this first and this and then put everything together. That's, uh, I would say, to put on this angle um, and then build this ahead of time and then put those two bolts in and then even it up so it's kind of flat across the top from the front to the back. And that's much better. The other thing that this is, I'm building it with these clips because these side cowlings are gonna come off a ton of times. I just absolutely know it. Uh, so it's it shouldn't be riveted. It should be um, some sort of clip or maybe a nut plate or a DZUZ fasteners. Those are expensive. Nut plates take a long time to build and to cut and to put in. So there's just more opportunities for error. These little clips are a little bit easier. The difficult thing is to get them so that they don't move around. I actually used uh, instant glue on these. Um, so they kind of will stay in one place. Maybe some RTV sealant on the other side to kind of hold them in place. That's my tip for the instrument panel. Don't cut anything. Uh, cut. Give yourself an extra quarter inch to half an inch before you cut. Uh, and only cut, well, you, the first cut, the first cut should be this cut right here and up to here. Don't cut any of these others, which I made a mistake. I did cut them all. Don't cut them until it's done. I was supposed to get 80 white rivets. These are the white rivets. 42 were in the bag. That's all that was there. White rivets are used along here and on the back on all of the fairings. Uh, in a lot of places, I replaced them uh, with just, and I'll have to paint them later. The other thing that it doesn't come with a lot of are these little nut caps. I kept hitting my head on those frequently so I've got uh, I, I went online and bought a bunch of them uh, also since the last time we met I've done painting so this is two coats of the white and this is uh, well it's a pr primer coat and then a coat of the white and then the yellow here's a it it just helps it's a UV protectant you have to have some sort of UV protectant on this fabric. This is just a straight Dacron. The XLM is a lot more expensive. So I used, uh, I bought this and figured I would paint it. The XLM to me looks like Bush Cat, like the Bush Cat airplane. And I just think it looks unfinished and cheap. But that's just me. You can blame me for that. Um, okay. I'm going to talk about hardware a little bit. Obviously, everything is metric. They sent a, a lot of these extra M4 bolts and uh, stainless nylac nuts, which were really helpful. I replaced a lot of um, rivets where I could reach. If I could reach both sides, I put these in instead of rivets. You never know when you want to take it apart. The same with the black plastic caps and the white plastic bolts. They went to, uh, wherever I could reach both sides instead of a rivet. And because I didn't have enough white rivets, I used these white bolts as well. They did not send enough of stainless steel rivets in the M4 size. I used them all up. Uh, tried to pull it from other side. I got a ton of black, and probably those will be used for the windshield and the cowling. And the... Here are tons of firewall and throttle, but these are 3.2 and they're um, uh, beveled or they're countersunk rivets. I mean, I used 20 and I got 80. I don't understand that. This is how the hardware comes. Uh, it's not always the most um, user-friendly to, to way to find. This has been my stash. These two are the seats. This, I don't know what it is. It came in the kit. Can't find any reference to it, but it's there. Don't know what it is.
This is the door hardware. They sent two of these. Haven't found where it belongs. They also sent a grab bag. It's just a bag of parts. So I've been using those whenever I can, but I still run the wrong size, the wrong, specifically lengths. I'm having a hard time. So there's a lot of extra pieces here that are just... This is my grab. If I have extras, I put in here and then I refer back to this. Um, but it's all metric hardware. Uh, well, actually on the throttles, I had another... They didn't send enough of the longer bolts. So again, it's another trip to the hardware store to get the next size larger. If I knew, I would buy a bunch at once. I really like where the fuel filler is. It's on the side and it goes down into the tanks. You can see, uh, yeah, the neon green straps instead of the black ones, too short. The ones that came with the kit were too short. But you can see here, it's behind the flaps. So even when the flaps are out and down, you'll still be able to get to this fuel filler really easily. I like that. Now I, I've seen uh, planes with this checkerboard tail and I really kind of like it. I saw it at Oshkosh and other places, photographs. It's really cool. Obviously it's not done. I need another roll. Uh, it's pretty light. It's just vinyl if I don't like it. The, the tail is actually yellow underneath it. You can see that. On the sides here, you can see the fairings that are done. Uh, these were used, uh, and I, you can see also the white tape that kind of fills in the gaps and hopefully will make it a little bit more aerodynamic. But it's, it's, still, it's still pretty aerodynamic. Here are the ones, they don't have any uh, tape on it yet, but you can see back an unfinished rudder. This is the other side of the rudder. I like the checkerboard. I'm going to have swoops that are going to be on the empennage here in the tail. Certainly there are a lot of things that were done out of order. Normally the wing tips and a lot of these fairings are put on later, uh, but I'm waiting for the engine. I was waiting for a spinner, even the wing tips. That's normally a final thing to do, but I'm just working on other things. Right now this is about a little over 200 hours uh, worth of work on this airplane so far. I'll do another one a little bit later when I get a little bit more completed. That's all for now.